What's up, everybody? Big Herc916, and you tuned in to another edition of my vlog. I want to say thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thanks for your support. You know, I'm all about that positivity and that motivation. And uh, today I want to talk about what I learned from my, my white OG in the pen, one of my mentors. And, uh, you know, I never grew up paying any attention to uh, really race or skin color. That's not how I was raised. <clears throat> my mom had, you know, white friends growing up, you know, Mexican friends. I mean, we grew up in a military household, so there was always a lot of diversity. There was never any type of racial bias or anything like that. So as I grew up, um, you know, I never really had any issues dealing with people outside of my my skin color. I've, you know, I had white friends, Filipino friends, Samoan friends, Mexican friends, um, you know, uh, white friends. You know, it, it, like I said, it, it just I had every nationality. So naturally when I got in the locked up, being that I had a diverse background, I was able to maneuver in a lot of circles a lot of people weren't able to maneuver in. And, you know, you always hear about the racial bias in the California state penal system and uh, the ignorance, which California state is different than the feds. The feds, you're dealing with a different mentality of individual. Yeah, you do have some um, racial bias, but it's not as extreme as in the state. And, uh, you know, when you're in the feds and you got people doing 30, 40, 50 years, you know, life sentences, these guys, when it comes to race, it don't matter if it's a black, if it's a <clears throat> white or Mexican guy, if this guy has information that could get you out early, you're gonna listen to him. You're not playing that old garbage where, oh man, I can't, you know, talk to you because you're black or you're white because if you see a white guy in a law library or a black guy and this guy you know he's he's studious you're going to ask him to help you with your brief you're going to ask him to help you with your appeal and that's just how the game goes you might not sit together in a chow hall you might not necessarily walk the track with him but you will have some interaction with him if you're seriously trying to go home and i know a lot of guys that would deal with people outside their race because these people could help them with their briefs to get out of you get out of prison. So, um, I did almost nine years for armed bank robbery. Um, my story is my story is on Fresh Out, um, high speed chase, um, spike strip, helicopters, the whole nine. Um, anyways, I did nine years, um, and. The first place I was sent to on my bid was Lompoc USP in Lompoc. Um, I don't know if it's still there, but back in 2000, they had a USP, a medium, and a camp. And uh, Lompoc USP was no joke. I mean, dudes up in there uh, regularly carried uh, shanks. Um, you know, the average person in there was doing, you know, 20 years or more. You never seen anybody parole from there um you have some major bosses up in there big time kingpins um you know mafia guys i was there um you know carmine persico was there when i was there in the same unit you know what i mean and i didn't know who he was until i did you know did my homework but uh big time dude man you know and there were some other guys there who were pretty high powered um you know i'm not saying i interacted with them you know you knew people about their background, but you didn't, you weren't in everybody's business. That's not, that's not how you get out at a USP. Anyways, you know, I played guilty, but I still felt that there was a possible loophole that if I could take advantage of, maybe I can get out early. And that's how I did my time, man. I didn't do my time trying to uh, hang out with people to fit in. You know, I didn't do my time trying to uh, get involved in the politics and 
running the, you know, the gambling table or things like that. I, I tried to focus more on myself and how I got there because I made some bad choices in life and I was trying to correct those choices so that I could correct the behavior. Anyways, my whole goal was to try to get out of prison early. I hated it. And so I used to go to a law library all the time. And I didn't really know what to look for, but I went in there and I, I you know, I met other guys and I asked questions. I tried to learn as much as I could. And, uh, you know, one day I was coming back to the unit and uh, this older white guy on the third tier, I was on the first tier, he hollered down. He was like, hey, youngster, you know, come on, let me holler at you. And, uh, you know, this guy, he talked to a lot of the brothers, you know, because a lot of the brothers were doing a lot of time under the crack law and this guy was helping him get back into court. He's very knowledgeable with the law and, you know, they, some people thought he was crazy, but, you know, he was about his business. And so I went up to his uh, his cell on a third tier and, um, and you know, and we, we start chopping it up and he's like, what are you going to the law library for? What are you doing over there? I said, uh, I'm trying to find a loophole. Maybe there's an avenue that I can get back into court with that will allow me to get out early. He's like, is that right? So you're, you're, you're trying to figure out how to get out early, huh? I said, yeah, man, I don't want to be hanging out here. You know, I'm, this is not, this is not my scene. And uh, he kind of looked at me. He's like, hey man, I got some stuff you want to read. You know, if you're trying to fight your case, and he figured out a way out early, you know, here's some, here's some books for you. So he put me up on the Black's Law First Edition. He put me up on the Congressional Acts. He put me up on um, some case law. He put me up on uh, the U.S. Attorney's Manual. He gave me a lot of information. And um, man, as I start to digest this information, it just blew my mind, you know. Um, <sighs> reading this this stuff and then realizing what I had done I felt like an idiot you know I felt like had I been more informed as far as just uh, the legalities of life and just how the judicial system really worked and how uh, the government operated I wouldn't have been even entertaining a bank robbery you know, I was on some gangster stuff, man, before, you know, I, I was doing a lot of stuff that was street orientated. So robbing a bank, you know, just kind of fell into that path. But after I started reading all this stuff, man, I'm like, wow, you know, <laughs> I was really on the wrong path. And uh, it just changed my life, man. This guy opened my eyes up to some really powerful information. And, uh, you know, most of the people in prison are asleep, man. You know, most of them accept their fate. They get in there, get a job, go work for the factories. They program. They, you know, do all the things typical inmates do. Um, bus spreads, get tattoos, uh, you know, get involved in, in, in drugs and, and, and just the politics and, you know, who's doing what and, and, and you know, this is how they keep the prisons populated with um, a sense of control because nobody's questioning the question. Nobody's really asking themselves why are they really in there. Okay, you got caught, you pled guilty, but is that it? Is that the end of the game? Is that uh, as far as the rabbit hole goes? No. There's a lot more in that rabbit hole. And once you start reading and, and, and learning, you look at people different, you look at life different, you look at uh, history different, and you realize that, you know, you are assuming a lot. You assume you knew what the definition of a, of a, of a client was, the definition of an attorney. Um, you know what the bar means the barristers accredited regency you guys didn't know that um what it means to go before the court and why the judge wear the black robe you know why is the flag positioned the way it's positioned in the courtroom um why is it the united states of america versus you um all the capital letters um 
the corporation as far as the United States, what does that mean? What is uh, House Joint Revolution 192 and the bankruptcy of the United States government and commercial law? This is all game, man. This is all game that my white OG taught me. He taught me a lot. And, um, you know, I only had roughly probably 16 months of his mentoring but I took that man and it carried me through my whole time, you know. It allowed me to create other study groups and other places I went to and to um, educate others that were also interested in getting out early. And a lot of these guys I'm still in touch with, man. I had, you know, white guys in other places that I did a lot of legal uh, research with and their families helped us file briefs and, you know, Mexican partners that we studied with and, you know, my other black partners that we used to research with. And it's just, it really changed my life. <clears throat> you know, the homie, um, good dude. He was doing 30 years for manufacturing synthetic heroin, uh, had a high speed chase, got shot, car got shot up like 30 something times, his truck, and uh, he got arrested. You know, he was, uh, he was out there tweaking and making heroin, making a lot of money, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars a week, uh, in excess. And you know, he was balling, man. He, you know, he he had a lot of money on the street. Um, put his daughter through college, um, and uh, you know, but he was doing this time, and he's like, you know, he didn't want to die in prison, but ultimately he did die in prison. He was a heroin addict. Um, he was, you know, addicted to heroin. He, he apparently, after I left there, he had got uh, in debt pretty heavy. Some guys wanted to kill him. Um, some other homies that we all studied with actually paid off his debt and, um, you know, looked out for him. But he, he did, he ended up overdosing, you know, he ended up dying in prison. And I remember one time when I went to a cell <clears throat> to return some books and to get some more information to read, I noticed a couple of blood spots on his arm like man you're bleeding right there and he kind of wiped him off real quick and played it off and you know me being kind of naive because you know i never you know dealt with anybody who's a heroin addict um i didn't think nothing of it but then later on i realized that oh man you know the big homie man he was on that h man he was he was uh he was addicted to heroin man but he was a super smart guy and uh my point being is that a lot of people who judged him on his race who looked at this this older white guy, ex-Vietnam veteran, you know, with a beard, you know, kind of scraggly, kind of he had a little bebop walk. Um, people who looked at him and judged him missed out on a lot of information, man, a lot of knowledge. You know, I remember one time I, I, I had, he never left the unit, just went to Chow Hall and came back. And I remember I, I said, man, let's go to the yard, man, let's go to the yard. He's like, oh, man, I finally got him to go to the yard. So I'm walking the track with him, you know, in the USP. Being a white guy and a couple of my, my um, other black partners that I wanted him to talk to, to hear so they can hear the game. Because I was telling them about all the stuff I was learning and they thought like, yeah, this guy's crazy. But, you know, <laughs> once they heard it from his mouth and he brought out paper, you know, different documents and, and you know, information, they were all quiet. They were all ears. And they couldn't believe it because my one friend was very educated, very intelligent articulate and he's like if this was all true i would have read about it somewhere oh this you know that guy he don't know what he's talking about afterwards he was like wow man you know i got a lot to learn we got to get on top of this and blah 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 and and we were all just like you know making it happen man and you know and here you know my, my homeboy my og um harold you know he passed away so i can say his name man harold man he you know, he had the respect of a lot of dudes, man. The Crips used to mess with him in there. The, you know, Bloods, different guys from L.A. and, you know, bikers, all type of people, man. Um, Southsider, Serranos, because he was helping people, man. He he had his cell declared as like a, a legal, I forgot what he called, like some type of, like a legal facility. So they couldn't touch any of his books. And he had an excessive amount of legal material in his cell, and, you know, in a one-man cell. And, um, man, we used to spread, you know, we cook food. I make a uh, two bowls we eat and nobody tripped, man. Cause they're like, you know, one of the brothers, man, who was like an OG crip, man. He like, um, you know, 
hey, Big Herc, man, I see you up there with Harold, man. You know, get that game, man. Stay out the way, man. This stuff, man, is just this drama, man. You don't need to be in the mix. You know, keep doing what you're doing. And if you see something over there, you think that'll help somebody out, man, you'll know, help me out, let me know. And I'm like, yeah, I got you. And, you know, that's how they looked at it, man. Other brothers, because in the USP, man, it, 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 it's dark, you know. It's a lot of just negativity. So when you can get some type of light, somebody who can shed light, you know, that's life changing. And uh, Harold changed a lot of lives. He helped a lot of people in there, man. And uh, I was sad when I heard he had passed away. You know, he was a good dude. And um, I just want to share that because this was my, my white OG, man. You know, uh, somebody who looked past race, you know, looked past um, just background. And he was like, man, you know, I see you're different, man. You're trying to do something with yourself, man. You're not out here, you know, walking around, you know, in the mix. I watch you. I've been watching you for a while now. And uh, he, he, he instilled a lot of confidence in me and and made me feel like I had value and uh, kind of was like you know somebody that I felt I could really relate to and it didn't matter he was white it didn't matter that he was from uh, what was he from Missouri you know and uh, that uh, you know he, we grew up different the fact was you know we had a common interest and trying to get out of prison early and we could learn from each other and you know that's the moral of the story man don't judge a book by its cover you know all this racial stuff and and ignorance you hear people talk about you you miss out on a lot when you entertain that stuff because some of the greatest information you're going to get is from people you would least expect it the people who are going to help you are the ones you would least expect it so just always be aware of that man and um you know, it could be a game changer. You know, uh, Harold changed my life, and in the and in the process, I helped a lot of other people with briefs and motions, filing habeas corpuses in court, and uh, and I was able to take all that and and um and just put it to use, man. And uh, it kept me out the mix because I never acclimated to prison. I never, <laughs> you know engaged in war stories or the drama or the, the bull i i studied law man and i focus on business and harold set the foundation down for that you know and it uh it, it gave me some serious purpose so i just want to share that story with you guys because uh you know a lot of you guys need to hear this type of stuff and i, I just want you to know that you know race man is is, is horrible a lot of things have happened in history a lot of people perpetuate a lot of hate and at the end of the day it doesn't get you nowhere you know it's all about common interests it's all about common goals you know some of the people you think that your brothers your homies your ace boom coons they're garbage and they don't care anything about you if they did they wouldn't be putting you in the positions they put you in so think about that the next time you ask yourself you know you know about somebody that's maybe mexican or black or asian or you know white or whatever ask yourself you know um are you giving that person the benefit of the doubt or are you judging them based on their their color or their race big herc 916